ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last time we talked about the qadar we finished the 16 principles regarding qadar that a person must believe and must understand properly before we go into the detail of qadar so remember this thing that when i say the detail i don't mean in depth of qadar we will stay on the surface of the qadar and and we will just understand the proper understanding of qadar we will not go into the depth rather we will just go into the detail that what is qadar in detail but we will not go into the depth of qadar there is a difference between this so today inshallah we will start the real thing about qadar last time i told 23 questions or 23 things that we will talk about does anyone has those write them right now does anyone ha- has it you have it okay say question number 1 what was it definition. definition the first thing was the definition of qadar so the first thing that we will talk about is the definition and inshallah next time i ask one brother he will bring the 16 principles and he will make a print out of it and i will give you those print outs before coming to the lectures of qadar because we will talk maybe six or seven more lectures maybe three four more lectures i will see before coming to the lectures of qadar read those 16 points and revise those every day because they are the base for the understanding of qadar you will understand why when i uh, now when i will start talking about qadar you will understand why are those principles so important and if you don't revise them you will forget them then when you come over here to learn you will have questions that should not come to your mind this is very important because this is a sensitive topic and in order to understand it properly you need to have a proper understanding a proper base the principles and you should not have any doubt in those principles remember this if you have any clear them so inshallah in the next class i will give you those print outs qadar the meaning of qadar in the ling- in the linguistic manner or in the arabic language means a guess or a measure it means a guess or a measure that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like uh, i'm just telling you in the linguistic manner al qadar it means guess or measure so i'll just write over here that qadar in the language when i mean linguistic i mean in the language not in the shar'i sense not in the our uh, sharia qadar it means a measure or a guess this is the meaning of the word al qadar when you see the word al qadar in the quran in the ahadith or by the ulama of the ahl sunnah wal jamaah when they mentioned the word qadar what they mean is allah's guess remember this is this definition is very important word by word the guess of allah in the whole universe until the day of qiyamah until the day of judgment that which allah knew or that which allah knows Allah wrote it down Allah willed it and Allah created it I will uh, repeat the definition in the shar'i says the meaning of qadar is the Allah's guess in the whole universe until the day of judgment that which Allah knows Allah has ilm knowledge that which Allah wrote it down and we will go into the detail of this in a minute that which allah willed and that which allah created so this is the definition of qadar when we say it that what do we mean by qadar in the shar'i sense so we will understand this definition inshallah so what was the second question importance why is qadar so important qadar is important now we are coming to talking number 2 importance of qadar 
Qadr is important because it is the sixth article of Iman. In the hadith of Bukhari and the hadith of Muslim, the very famous hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, that when Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he said, Man Iman, what is Iman? And he said, Tu'mina billahi wal malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa yawm al akhir wa tu'mina bil qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi. Remember, there are some people who would say that the word تُؤْمِنُوا بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِ وَشَرِّهِ This شَرِّهِ is not mentioned in, in any of the hadith. This is a false claim. Because there are hadith in Bukhari and Muslim which mentions the word تُؤْمِنَا بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِ وَشَرِّهِ And we'll go into the detail of this. But just, uh, I'm just telling you something as a short note. Meaning, what is Iman? Iman is that تُؤْمِنَا بِاللَّهِ You believe in Allah. وَالْمَلَائِكَتِهِ And His angels. وَكُتُبِهِ And His books that Allah revealed to the messengers, to the Rasuls. وَرُسُولِهِ And to the messengers. Why? Because the book are revealed to the messengers. If you do not believe in the messenger, then to whom are the books revealed? وَيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ And you believe in the day of the judgment, the last day. وَتُؤْمِنَا بِالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِ وَشَرِّهِ And you believe in the qadr of Allah, the good and the bad of it. Alright? This is the proof from the... <coughs> Verse of the from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, as I told you in the very first lecture that we did on iman, I said that the salaf, this is their way and this is their method of the salaf that they always bring proof for whatever they say. Because without the proof, if I say anything or if any person says anything, it does not have any weight. Because the only person whose aqwal are to be followed are the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the only deity who should be worshipped is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember as the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in hadith al-Qudsi and just to assure somebody what hadith al-Qudsi is uh, are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Allah is saying this it is not the Quran but it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the messenger of Allah and he is directly narrating the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that there is a hadith that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu bani adam khattahun. All the bani adam they do khata, they do mistakes, they do errors. Wa khairum khattahun wa tababun. And the best of those who make mistakes are the one who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Malik rahmatullah said, every person can make mistake except ashabu khabar. Haza ashab al-qabr Except the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And he pointed to the qabr of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So every person can make a mistake except the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That is why anything that a person says has no value except that he brings a proof And that is why the salaf, salaf al-salihin, they used to bring the proof This is what we say, this is the proof from the Quran and from the hadith According to the understanding of the sahaba Razi ta'ala anhu ajma'in so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qamar, chapter number 54, verse number 49 and verse number 50. In a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed all things we created with qadr, predestination, with a measurement, with a guess. وَمَا أَمْرُنَا إِلَّا وَاحِدَةٌ Kalamhim bil basar. Then Allah SWT says, and our commandment is but one, like, like the glance, like the twinkling of an eye. Like once you twinkle the eye, it cannot go back. This is how the order of Allah. Once it's gone, it, it doesn't come back. And this is how the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So this verse in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is a proof that Qadr is very important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kulla shay'in khalaqnahu bi qadr. Allah created everything with the guess, with the measurement. So if we do not believe in the Qadr, we are rejecting the verse of the Qur'an. And rejecting even a single letter of the Qur'an is kufr itself. That is why we need to be very careful when we talk about Qadr. Okay, what was the third question? The Hukam of the Sharia, the Hukam of uh, Islam. So we now we will come to question number or part number three of it. That what is the Hukam, what is the order? of Islam of Sharia in this matter it is for the Ain what is for the Ain means it is obligatory on every single Muslim to believe in it 
The difference between Fardi'in and